On my daughter's birthday, I got her a set of pastels and a notebook, among other various toys. She loved them and immediately went about scribbling some drawings in the notepad. Like any proud parent, I put a few of them up on the refrigerator. She drew things like the family cat, our house, her grandmother, which is my mother-in-law, and the goldfish. His name is Fishy. However, she started to draw some rather grim-looking pictures, featuring a purple-clad witch, or whatever she is. Apparently, her name is Barbara. Neither I nor my wife know anybody named Barbara. I asked who she was, and she told me, She's that lady that watches me sleep. I was dumbfounded. I asked her, What do you mean, she watches you sleep? She replied, Yeah, she sits near my bed every night and watches me until I fall asleep. This got me very concerned, not only for the safety of my daughter, but for the well-being of my wife and other child as well. I have a newborn. That same day, I went out to the local hardware store and purchased security camera equipment. I installed it all around the perimeter of the house and put two cameras facing my daughter's room window. At this point, I thought it might be one of the local vagrants peeping in at my daughter. Since I don't live in the best neighborhood, this was entirely a possibility. We do have a few crazies that stay under the bridge nearby and take drugs. The next day, I asked my daughter if she saw Barbara that night. When she told me that she did, I went right to the security camera and reviewed the footage. I saw nothing. I had to be sure, so I went over it again, this time slower. Still nothing. It was then that I decided to set up security cameras inside her room. I didn't tell her about it. Then I waited. The next morning, sure enough, she told me she had seen Barbara again. Upon viewing the footage, I saw nothing unusual. You cannot imagine the feeling of relief that swept over my body. I felt as if everything was going to be alright, and that I can put this whole Barbara mess out of my head. That was until my daughter came up to me. What she told me shook me down to my very core. She told me that Barbara was angry at me. She said that Barbara doesn't like being watched. She said that Barbara is going to hurt me if I don't stop watching her. These are the pictures of Barbara. This happened to me a little bit ago, around three weeks or so. A little bit of background info, I live in a slightly rural Alaska, and the area around my house is heavily wooded. Be me, taking out trash around 11pm, dark as fuck. Very high winds, trees bending and flailing. Put away trash and glance across the street into woods. All of a sudden, the wind stops. Quieter than death. What the fuck, that PNG? I look around into the woods, and I see the outline of a figure. What are you doing in my swamp, that gif? I squint a little, and I begin to see its features. Very tall, about seven feet and very pale, with a gaunt face and sunken dark eyes. Worst part was its sickening grin. I get chills just thinking about it. As I turn to run into my house, the wind starts again, as if it was from the snap of a finger. I haven't seen the thing again, but it's still freaky as hell. And sorry about this, it's not what you guys are looking for, but I thought it was pretty spoopy. They say when you die, your life flashes before your eyes. When you're dying, a chemical known as DMT gets released, which is the chemical that causes this to happen. It is also released when you sleep and causes you to dream. You're dying at this very moment. Your life has already been lived out. What you are experiencing is a constant loop of DMT-induced flashbacks. I fucking hate you. Who doesn't use BitTorrent these days? I'm certainly more than guilty of pirating thousands of dollars worth of media. But never again. It all started with a torrent file popped up in my client that 
I didn't remember downloading. It was labeled Mahoney. It was only 112 megabytes. I figured my brother had downloaded a CD or something while I was away from the computer. It didn't worry me too much until my buddy came over and was fucking around on my computer. Hey, what's this Mahoney shit you're torrenting? He said. I don't know why, but I felt like giving a smartass answer. It's, uh, naked pictures of your sister. I said, and he rolled his eyes. I was never very good with wit. Though, as soon as I said that, the computer started making noise. You know the weird feedback that computers make when a cell phone goes off near it? It sort of sounded like that, except somehow angrier. We were a little creeped out, but we just shrugged it off. The Mahoney torrent was about three-fourths of the way done, and I was curious to see what it really was. So we put it in the back of our minds and continued bullshitting. Later that night, my brother came home while I was on the computer. I asked him about the Mahoney torrent, and he said he didn't download anything. He might have been lying, but... I don't know why he would. Not like it mattered. The torrent was 99% finished. I should have deleted it then. But curiosity was killing me. When it finally finished, it appeared on my desktop as a single folder, labeled Mahoney. I clicked it open and nearly shit myself. It was my buddy's sister, Kristen, bare-assed and on her knees. All in all, there were about 45 pictures of her naked. I won't lie, I've been curious as to what she looked like in the buff, but she was rather plain looking, and I was far from crushing on her. Though, there was something else I noticed about the pictures. In every one, Kristen was crying. Every picture showed Kristen with her eyes puffy and red, with makeup running and mouth open, in an unmistakable groan of pain. This realization was too much. I clicked the rad X and dragged the file into the trash bin. I was a little shaken, but the folder was gone now. I tried to stop worrying about it and sleep. The next morning, I turned on my computer, only to find that the Mahoney folder had been restored to my desktop. I was visibly scared now, but more than that, I was curious. This file had in it exactly what I had said was in it. Maybe it was more than just a file. Maybe it was something magical. I tried to think of something tame, so I thought, The Mahoney folder has baby pictures in it. After a few seconds, nothing really happened, so I spoke out loud. The Mahoney folder has baby pictures in it. As I was uttering these words, my computer started to make that same strange feedback again, but a little louder than before. Sure enough, when I clicked the folder open, it was filled with pictures of babies. Crying babies. Not just the whiny babies that you always see. They were obviously sobbing. Terrified. Psychologists think that babies don't know terror or fear or shit like that, but these babies were horrified by whatever was taking their picture. I was done with this. I dragged the folder to the trash, emptied it immediately, shut the computer off, and left for school. At school, I didn't tell my buddy about the Mahoney folder, and he didn't ask. He was too in shock. Apparently, his sister was found unconscious in a pool of her own vomit. I wondered if I should tell him about the pictures, but in the end, I kept it to myself. Hopefully, forgetting about it was the best thing to do. But I just couldn't get those images out of my head. Those screaming children and my friend's sobbing sister. When I got home, I was almost afraid to boot up the computer. But I didn't have to. I walked into my room to find my brother on my computer. You're into some fucked up shit, man, you know that? He said as he walked in. I asked what he meant, and he said, that file you've got, Mahoney or something? There's some fucked up shit in there. When he said that, the feedback was there again, even louder this time. My eyes grew wide, and I ran past my brother to the computer. The Mahoney file was back. I clicked it open with a shaky hand, and the only thing inside was a single text file. I clicked on the file and saw the two most horrifying words 
that I have ever read. I'm free. This reminded me of something that happened to me while I was spending the night over at my aunt and uncle's house. They were putting me to bed and I was bawling because I didn't have my stuffed toy dogs, Woof Woof and Charlie. In an attempt to console me and get my bratty, noisy self to go to sleep, my aunt had grabbed a pile of my cousin's stuffed animals, trying to convince me to take one. Trying to convince me to take one, one by one. She finally got to a dog that looked like a shitty Goodwill version of the old pound puppies. That had a jingle bell in its head. So she shakes it for me and says, See? His brains jiggle. Which got me lolling. It made me choose him to sleep with. She tells me goodnight and leaves, and I curl up to sleep. As I'm laying there getting ready to drift off, I hear the thing say, Do your brains jiggle? They couldn't get me to stop screaming and crying for hours. Fuck, it still makes me uneasy. I'm sure it was probably in my head, but fuck. What kind of kid imagines that sort of fucked upness? Laying in bunk bed with my friend on top, we're both about seven to eight years old. Friend is scared of the dark, so we have to have the door open. About to fall asleep when his dad walks into the room. Gives my friend a shiny rock and says, I stole this from the monster in the forest. He's mad now. Can you hide it under your pillow tonight? Friend just nods as his dad walks out. Neither of us are able to sleep. At least I learned why he was afraid of the dark. Be long ago when I was a 23-year-old bachelor living alone in a one-room apartment. Party guy. Woo. One Friday night, I drank myself to a blackout in my living room with my friends. I was deep in sleep when I get smacked in the face with some blunt object. Middle-aged man holding a bat to my face. What the fuck, is this a dream? You dirtbag! You know what you did to my girl? The fuck? She's knocked up, you son of a bitch! Mister, you got the wrong guy. He then pulls out a picture of some nice-ass bitch that I don't know. This is her. Sir, you got the wrong man, I swear. You're fucking lying. She says it was you. He's yelling while shaking me up. He's strangling me up and down, and I'm drunk, sick, and scared. So he's shaking me, trying to snuff me, and he's shaking the picture he's showing me. And all I thought was, ooh. When I was younger, like 15-ish, I was home alone, chilling. There's a knock on the door, so obviously I go see who it is. There's this guy, standing completely still, eyes straight ahead, basically staring at my forehead with the blandest face possible. No defining features, a face you wouldn't remember, even if you had a conversation with him. So, I'm standing at the door, asking what he wants, or if he's looking for someone, etc. And all he replies with is, Can I come inside? What do you want? Can I come inside? Who are you? Can I come inside? In that same deadpan monotone voice. No real inflection on anything. Eventually, I say if he won't talk to me or look at me, I'll just call the cops because he's being weird. So, if this is a joke, quit it. So I shut the door and pretend to call the police. He's still just standing there. My door was frosted glass so I could see. I end up calling the cops for real, explaining what is going on. I get some quick photos for proof and ask him to come and either chase him off or force him away. They tell me to go and hide somewhere in case he breaks in, so I do. About 15 minutes later, I hear the police pull up, so I go and see what's going on. Creepy guy has left, so I give a statement and show them the photos I took. At the time, I was freaked out, but I just dismissed it as a creepy guy. Looking back on it, it's now even creepier. Once when I was driving from Texas to California, in the middle of nowhere, up ahead, I saw flames. As I got closer, there was a car in the middle of the road, on fire. Normally, this wouldn't be very creepy, except for the fact that I was in the middle of the desert, and I had been driving for hours through it. There was no one and nothing around for miles and miles. I was in the middle of a wasteland. I got out, of course, to check and see if someone was in the car. No dice. Then, 
I thought I heard something in the trunk. A couple of banging sounds. Of course, it could have been something in the trunk maybe exploding, but I couldn't shake the feeling that maybe someone was in it. The fire was way too hot for me to get in there and to try and open it. I whipped out my phone to try and call 911, but I had no signal. At that point, it occurred to me that I may have just stumbled across a murder. That the person who did this might be watching. So, I got the fuck out of there. As soon as I had a signal, I called the police and told them everything that I saw. A few hours later, they called me back to confirm that the area that I was in, they didn't find shit. Between age 13 to 15, hanging out with a friend when we noticed that his basement has absolutely no windows. Blackest pitch black I've ever seen when you turn off the lights and close the door. We decided to make a game out of it. Sit on the top step with the door shut and the lights off. First person to chicken out and either flip the light switch on or open the door loses. We're lasting a while the first time. I noticed something at the far end of the basement. A pair of red lights next to each other. Fancy that they're moving slightly. Point them out to friend. He sees them too. That round ends in a draw as we both yank that door open and jet back upstairs. Rationalize the lights. Probably just some kind of machinery. There was a furnace down there and probably some other stuff that would have red lights. Round two. Notice the lights straight away this time. Point them out to friend. They are very close to where the furnace is, but not quite in the exact spot. Eyes adjust slightly to the near perfect darkness. Fucking humanoid shape in the dark around the lights. It's like a cloaked person hunched over with glowing red eyes. Again, looks like it's occasionally shifting from side to side, as if uncomfortable sitting in one place for too long. Otherwise, doing nothing whatsoever. Well, I lost this round. Back up into the light and the safety. We rationalize some more. This time it's some kind of machine and a pile of clothes or a stain on the wall. Try for round three. Again, we see the red lights and the gently shifting humanoid shape. It's not making any aggressive moves, so we just stare it down for probably 15 minutes or so. Neither of us are backing down this time, so we agree to a draw, turn on the main lights, and finally go to investigate the eyes. We check the wall where we saw them. Jack shit. There's a single shelf bolted to the wall and holding a single box of paraffin wax and nothing else. Nothing mound-shaped, nothing red, and nothing illuminated. Way too chicken shit to investigate with the lights off. I had been reading X for several years at this point, and I knew what comes from antagonizing shit that you don't understand. We eventually arbitrarily decided that it was the ghost of his dead hamster, whose cage was stored elsewhere in that same basement. Seventeen years ago, little kid in the fifth grade. Every day during recess, me and my friend, we'll call him Kevin, would hang out during recess. Our favorite spot was a radiator, which was positioned in a far corner of the playground, next to a wired fence that separated the school from a trailer park on the other side. We spent the majority of our recesses here. However, by the time we both reached third grade, there was a rather large drug bust at the trailer park causing a lot of the residents to move, leaving it mostly vacant. One trailer remains, looks rusty. Over time, more and more vacancy notices are posted by the city on the door, but nobody ever receives them. Guess everyone just stopped giving a shit about it after a while. One day, me and my friend are eating lunch outside during recess. We're both facing the fence and the abandoned trailer park. Out of fucking nowhere, we see a white flash from beyond the fence. Almost didn't notice it with the sun being out, but it was still noticeable. At first we think nothing of it and don't tell anyone about it. However, over the next few weeks, it started happening more and more frequently until we would see it pretty much every day during recess. Decide to tell one of the staff helpers about it and she immediately calls the police. Didn't hear anything else about it after that. 
walking home with my friend from a birthday party months down the line. We split off as we both lived on different streets. We say goodbye, and I tell him to log on to RuneScape when he gets home. Yeah, it was when RuneScape was pretty new, sue me. Sitting on my computer mindlessly hours later, notice that he never got on. Didn't show up to school the next day either. Odd. Days pass, still haven't seen him. Word starts to spread that he's sick. Ask my parents if I can go visit him since he's sick one day. They both exchange worried glances. Later, my dad tells me that he's visiting his grandparents in Chicago, sitting at lunch alone on top of the radiator again. It's been literally months since I've last seen Kevin. Getting pretty lonely. See that fucking flash again from beyond the fence, and I get mad. Run up to the staff helper and tell her that the trailer is flashing at me again. She tries to tell me that she already took care of it, and it's just my imagination. Fuck that shit. Tell my parents about it that night. One of my dad's friends worked in the local police department. Very next day, recess has to be held inside the gym. Teachers won't tell us why. Next day, the trailer is gone, and the area surrounding it is surrounded with yellow tape. The fence is later redone and is boarded up instead of being chain-linked. Somehow, get the feeling that I'll never see my friend again at this point. Years pass, and I forget about it, until recently when I went back home to visit my parents, and we drove past my old elementary school. Trailer park is gone, and a daycare sits there instead. While driving, ask my mom what really happened to Kevin. Apparently, my dad's police department friend and his co-worker investigated that trailer park again, and inside of the trailer, they found a stash of pictures, about 20 in total, of me and my friend sitting on that fucking radiator during recess, and a couple of me sitting by myself after Kevin had gone missing. It really bugged me that they had lied to me all these years, but his body was never found, so I guess there's that. Whenever I think about how close I came to being in his shoes, I shudder. I don't think I will ever know if he's dead or alive, or if they found who did it. By far, my most disturbing childhood experience. Difference between X and K. X. I was in a woods and I saw a skinwalker, and I ran, then summoned my succubus to cuddle with me until I wasn't scared. Then I went home and tried to fuck my Pearl Tulpa. K. I was in a woods fucking my hot, dear girlfriend when a skinwalker came by and ripped her head off, then chased me through the woods. I kept screaming, Oh, Daddy, please fuck me, and almost died laughing hearing the skinwalker repeat it. Then I went home and put a bunch of beans in my Mosin. <laughs>